I'm Talib Vizram, and this is World Changing Ideas, where we investigate how leading innovators are solving our most challenging issues. On today's episode, Bethany Edwards and Anna Couturier talk to us about rethinking the pregnancy test. Welcome to the show, Bethany and Anna. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Great. Well, um, I love one of the taglines of, of your product, uh, which is not your mama's pregnancy test, um, which, of, of course, kind of gets at the fact that, um, you know, the first home pregnancy test became available in the, in the late 70s um, and not much has changed since then. So how did you and the rest of your team kind of decide to come up with this entirely new approach to the home pregnancy test? You know, Lea is an earth-friendly healthcare company, and we're on a mission to revolutionize reproductive health through the development of innovative products. And Lea is obviously our, our first piece uh, is doing that. And, you know, it had a really integrated approach. This was part of research while we were at the University of Pennsylvania, which is where we met and where the co-founding team met. And I've always had a passion for, you know, the relationship between a woman, woman and her health and really have believed that it's sacred and private and shouldn't be shamed in any context. And so that background was, was definitely part of the inspiration. But oddly enough, I mean, the other piece of this really came from the, the idea that um, temporality and the fact that single use plastics and like pregnancy tests, you know, single use diagnostics, they're only used for a few minutes and everything that they're made out of plastics, glass fibers, nitrocellulose, these things do not biodegrade. So how could we better match up new materials with the life cycle of the product? The fact that nobody have innovated in the form factor in over 30 years was just mind blowing to, to us. And we knew that there had to be a better way, a better solution, something that could provide uh, sustainability. You know, pregnancy tests account for over 2 million pounds of plastic waste in the U.S. each year, which is enough to stretch from here to the International Space Station and back about seven times. There's obviously a demand on the sustainability side. And then on the privacy side, I mean, we spoke with hundreds of women, one-on-one -on -one interviews, you know, who hasn't kind of thrown some of these in the trash and hidden them in the trash? And we know that 92% of women value privacy whenever they're testing. And so what could we do to overlay this unmet need around privacy? The fact that nobody had invaded in the form factor as well as sustainability. And that's how we got to the idea of let's make it paper, not plastic. Um, also just inspired by this, I have this quote from Richard Fry in which he said, um, he was at the Industrial Design Society for America and he said, we should be making products to be so disposable as opposed to focusing on trying to make them recyclable. And so that just changed my mindset in the way that I thought about product design and, and how to and commercializing products and just this idea that there's such a power in the materials that you choose. And if you could design them with that in mind, it has the ability to uh, you know, truly allow for biodegradability. Uh, and so that, that was kind of the, the, the very initial uh, inspiration into this. Great. And so let's talk a little bit about then the, the kind of design of it. So, so it's, it's made, of, made of paper, it's foldable and flushable. Um, can you talk a little bit more about kind of, you know, really what it's made of and, and a little bit about the design process? So as you can see, Bethany's holding it up. It's it's very slim. It's um, not actually foldable before use, but post use. It can be folded down if you're throwing it away or um, flushing it. But at every step of the design process, we've used the full intended use of the product to guide our design and material selections. So not only a diagnostic as the intended use, but a product that degrades and breaks apart as the intended use. So we took an extremely broad view of inspiration before actually developing the product. What industries um, outside of medical device and, bio and diagnostics are um, making products that do these same things? What materials really lend themselves to um, breaking apart, biodegrading, dispersing in water? And so we obviously landed on the paper, not plastic, but then in the actual choice of our temporary hydrophobic barriers, we looked to natural materials, inert materials, materials that would biodegrade and would achieve the purpose. And then once we had our materials chosen, we actually then looked at the engineering of the product itself. How can we build this in a way that 
the building steps actually lend themselves to breaking apart as well. Um, Bethany just highlighted the perimeter seal around the device that is just a series of mating teeth that uh, much like a coffee filter, holds the top and bottom of the device together without using any glue, but it also provides areas for water to get into the device and help aid in that breakdown. We've engineered perforations into the device as well as a tearaway window so that there's no extra glue and it's at every step of the use, you're actually providing areas to enhance the inevitable breakdown of the device. I think the other thing that's really interesting and we've spent a lot of time on was just the fact that it's only three components. So it's the the bottom of the device, the top of the device, and the diagnostic that sits inside of the device. But as these pieces just separate, I mean, they are essentially four squares of toilet paper. Uh, so there's been a lot of effort spent in the overall reduction of the design and the, the elements that could be used. How do you design this in a way that we're using as few of materials as possible? The reuse of materials. So some of these materials um, are used in multiple different ways uh, with just slightly different coatings. So, you know, one of the big things that Anna was talking about is the fact that this housing unit has this temporary hydrophobic coating that we designed for that will repel liquid for a certain period of time. But then, the, so if I were to put a water droplet on here, it would sit on the surface. But then it, within a five to 10 minute window, you would see it sink down in and start to absorb, which activates and starts biodegrading that coating. So there's this uniqueness of being able to pick materials that are either plant, mineral, or protein and have the ability to re react to the natural environment. That's kind of what allows it to truly be biodegradable. There was a lot of intention put around how can we use the fewest amount of materials and how can we um, use the fewest amount of components. Anna and I appreciate really good design. Um, so not only is there an element of function, but there is an element of, of kind of beauty to it as well. I mean, um, the curvature is, is kind of intentional, the little like um, embossing patterns, you know, the emboss on the height of it is not only functional in order to allow the fluidics to wick through, but it's it's got a nice kind of tactile um, touch to it as well. So there was a lot of um, function and form, I would say, kind of built into this. Wow. So just to give us kind of a comparison to traditional um, pregnancy tests and plastic pregnancy tests, what's kind of the waste footprint difference? I mean, you guys are zero plastic um, is there any kind of figure that you can give us that gives us kind of an idea of, of the difference? Yeah. Uh, so we, we went through and purchased the top pregnancy tests based on retail data. We took them all apart. So I have like bits and pieces of all of them in our, in our labs and we, we weighed all of, all of the components and then, you know, did an analysis on how many tests we know are, are purchased per year, also based on industry retail data. And we're able to calculate out the 2 million pounds of plastic waste just in the US. In the US it only accounts for about 30 to 35% of all global pregnancy test waste. And you talk about the way that, you know, the innovations that have happened are actually detrimental to, to the environment, right? Yeah, the innovations that have happened have been digital. They've added digital components to the tests. Uh, and, and what they're doing is, you know, there's, there's these kind of intense little like computer screens. Uh, and they are, they have optical readers that are reading the exact same test strips as the analog plastic based tests. So if you can see this, this is the same type of test strip. It's just attached to this big old little computer. Uh, I mean, yeah. and nobody's recycling these. I mean, you can't recycle this kind of stuff. I mm -hmm. mean, only 90, you know, more than 91% of plastics in general aren't, aren't recycled. But I mean, like, you have to, you have to pull these things apart if you even want to try to, to make an attempt at it. It's kind yeah. of wild. So just in terms of the diagnostics, then, uh, does it, does it work? Does your test work in the same way in terms of kind of hormone detection that a, that a traditional one would? 
It does. Yeah, it's still detecting HCG, which is the pregnancy hormone. So in that sense, it's still very similar to existing tests. It also reads like an existing test in the sense that, you know, it's one line is a negative and then two lines is a positive. So that's pretty standard in most lateral flow diagnostic tests. I mean, we did have to create some some new um, formulations to make stuff work on our substrate and new ways of dispensing all of the chemistry. So it's a combination of um, of that, but I mean, a lot of it is on the material side. It's, it's a lot of material science at work. And how important is this idea that, that you already mentioned, but this idea that the life cycle is, is so short, you know, it's, it's a product that's that's used for, you know, a couple minutes and, and, and then it has such a big waste footprint. Should we be thinking more about about that generally? I personally think so. And, and Manny, you can jump in here too. And, um, you know, I'm really fascinated by what's happening with new, with material science and the fact that it, it can be kind of the, the next industrial revolution. I think that what's happening with people finding ways to use more natural or, um, you know, plant mineral protein inspired materials truly stands to kind of eliminate the plastics and create a lot of new solutions and consumer packaged goods. And we're starting to see some fabulous stuff happening with, um, you know, biomanufacturing, sustainable manufacturing, you know, people growing mushrooms and using mushrooms. I mean, us using, you know, cellulose and paper-based solutions. I mean, I think that there's something that's that's really powerful about what's kind of going on. And it is stemming from this idea of sort of a circular economy or a 360 life cycle or, you know, how can you truly use materials and what we know now about materials and biomimicry to design for um, the product's intended life cycle. I, I think it's important also that um, for products like these that are so important to people, you know, it's a, it's a small snapshot of your life that you're actually taking it, but it's a momentous experience regardless of what you want the outcome to be. And first I'll just take a side note. Some people do save these tests and as um, you may see on some of our marketing, you can save, save the test as well. You know, it's designed to biodegrade, but once dried out, it will, live and not biodegrade if you scrapbook it or frame it or put it in a card. Um, okay. But I think there's, there's importance in thinking about things in a way that you're not overcomplicating them. You know, at this point in someone's life, they need to know an answer. They don't need a computer screen and batteries and excess plastic and glass fibers and all of this junk in order to get the answer yes or no. You know, that's what you need, that's what's important. And so I think there's a there's a real importance in just thinking about the way we make products to do what they're supposed to do and just not be overcomplicated and get to the point of what the user needs. I think the other important piece there is in the case of using new materials which allow the product to meet, you know, sustainability and biodegradability um, product offerings and value propositions we are also offering this level of privacy that nobody else can offer because of the fact that it is paper-based, it is able to be flushed. And that in and of itself, I think is just this really, um, there's there's a lot of empowerment with that. I mean, we know that there's sometimes shame in taking these or in purchasing these. And like one of the big things from a mission standpoint for us is to pull that, that kind of shame out of it or, you know, the, the ability to have an open dialogue about it. I mean, we chose the name Leah purposefully because it's not clinical. It's warm. It's kind of open. You know, the, our packaging design, everything that we're doing from a branding and marketing standpoint as well is to try to foster open dialogue and to encourage, you know, the, the frequent use and purchase of these tests because, you know, we know that testing early and often provides women with with added benefits as well. And so by kind of reducing that that potential friction around privacy concerns or just, you know, seeing a bunch of tests pile up in the trash. I mean, we know that um, even women who are struggling to get pregnant and are going through IVF and going through a lot of these tests, 
seeing seeing a bunch of them pile up in the trash is is heart wrenching. Um, and it's also like it's private. You don't necessarily want somebody knowing that you're taking that many tests. And so to be able to add that additional privacy element is really powerful in the design of these devices as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Anna, one of the words that you used that, that struck me was, was momentous. This is like kind of a momentous occasion for a lot of women who are taking tests. Uh, and, and, and it's also, um, you know, I expect people who take a pregnancy test, they need to trust it. They need to feel like they can trust it because it is such a, a big deal. Uh, how do you persuade people to use kind of this novel product when perhaps they have a lot more trust in what's come before? I think the first thing is these are medical devices that we couldn't sell this without FDA clearance. So the process of getting clearance through the FDA is presenting loads of data comparing to pre-existing devices on the market that are standards of care and showing that the the data matches, the performance is the same. So that's something that we couldn't even be selling this product without. Mm. Um, and then the fact that we can support that 99% accurate claim from the day of your missed period, as well as it, it is the same underlying technology that Bethany spoke about. It detects the hormone HCG in your urine. So it's, it's the same device. It's just biodegradable, water dispersible and private. You know, I've personally, probably use, used or tested um, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of these at a certain point. I think Anna too, I think between the two of us. <laughs> I have a 16 month old that I found yes. out about by using, uh, using uh, one of our yes. tests during the development yes. process. So oh, wow. yes. I can say it works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we have, um, We've learned way more about urine than I ever thought I would when we when we started on this. I, I mean, I never thought that would be part of the whole process, but inherently it, it is. Um, Are there any fun facts you want to drop? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm going. I'm going to. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. We can talk about this a lot because Anna and I have, have gotten probably way too much um, urine on our hands. Uh, literally. So we maintain, literally, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, we maintain a massive, like, frozen and refrigerated collection of urine samples that we get from a fertility clinic uh, and a couple other clinics that we have a good relationship with. Obviously, all anonymous, but we come in, you test the samples, you take the specific gravity, you take the pH, and we run all these different samples on devices. Uh, and, and you would be surprised. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. You, if you drink coffee all the time, you can really jack up your specific gravity and your pH. So um, one time we were looking for a sample that we needed both of those. And so I just drank coffee like all, all day, like two, two days basically in a row <laughs> uh, to, to use my sample for it. Uh, I have actually some samples of negative and positive urine in, in my fridge right now. Um, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, so, I hope the so containers we, are marked. Really they are well. marked. Okay. They are. They definitely are marked. And you would be you'd be surprised by the wide range of colors that urine has. Uh, I think that was one of the other things that has has kind of fascinated me. Anna, right. you know, I mean, we've got lots of stories. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> we we do have my urine up to I think maybe 24, 25 mm -hmm. weeks um, of pregnancy uh, stored, as well as. Um, Early on in the development process, I actually set up a toilet on a platform um, with PVC piping out the bottom in my basement so that we could actually photograph and take data of the way the test behaves throughout the flushing process as it leaves, leaves your home. Um, and so that, you know, was a was an installation in my home mm -hmm. for, for, for a couple of years until we moved and now it's in my new home but separated until it's needed again. <laughs> that's, I mean that's a great point there were studies there are a whole bunch of studies even related to flushability that are third-party related that you have to do all these different like tests and clearances so so yeah Anna learned a lot about um, toilets. It was in the backyard for a little <laughs> bit until so I was I was kindly encouraged to put it in the basement. <laughs> wow. See, science can be fun, kids. 
That's right. And and you can make it artistic too. It's this whole STEM STEAM thing. There's so much power in uh, in the integrated disciplines. Yeah. If these if these were the kinds of science experiments I was doing at school, I think maybe I would have become a scientist. But <laughs> <laughs> there's there's always a way to figure out how to do something. Right, and, right. and you can always come back to being a scientist. Oddly enough, I mean, prior to to working on this research at Penn, I spent 10 years in advertising and marketing. So you'd be surprised how much science and things you can learn from from just reading patents in uh, academic journals. And then a lot of just, you know, learning by doing us mixing weird things that we probably shouldn't have been mixing and baking them in our ovens. Um, yeah. <laughs> Great and 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 so I guess the the final product uh, then just just launched in in March is that right? Yeah. And so where can people um find and and buy Leah? Yeah. So right now it's available through our website at meetleah.com, uh, and there are two options that you have through the site right now, and we're actively looking to expand some of the the SKUs and the product sizes. But you can either purchase the branded one. Okay. Um, which is kind of fun. It's got a little expletive on it. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. I think there's, I think there's a little sass in it, right? Uh -huh. And then in the inside, it's got our PC flush and the over ninety nine percent accurate, zero percent plastic, one hundred percent your business. And then this comes with two tests and an instruction for use. And so this is our branded version. Okay. And then we also have what we call our ultra discreet which is just uh, the two tests packaged in a completely white box. And then they ship in uh, a very, you know, unmarked cardboard yeah. box to consumers. So we are trying to really bake in this value proposition of privacy mm -hmm. kind of all the way through the process or as much as we're able to to be able to do that so through our site it does allow us to to offer the the additional version of just being in an all-white package and the tests themselves come in an unbranded unmarked wrapper as well great and um and then finally you know what's what's next for for leah yeah um so demand has been has been really strong in these last couple of weeks. I guess it's only really been like seven or eight weeks since launch. And we're actively looking to expand distribution. So that's that's our biggest thing. Um, you know, but we're seeing really strong international demand as well. And so that's something that we're we're actively kind of trying to figure out. We we do want to be able to expand um, XUS because we're seeing a significant amount of people come to the site. Uh, and are trying to purchase and you know we don't have have the ability to ship to them at this point well uh it's it's been really uh great hearing about uh the kind of design process and the the you know pregnancy test origami and and it's it's really <laughs> fascinating so uh thank you so much uh bethany and, and anna for, for being here appreciate it yeah, thank you so much for having us. This has been a blast. And um, we're just we're really delighted to be able to share this story with others and and be the first zero percent plastic pregnancy test that is available. Trying to disrupt the whole, um, you know, don't find any of your your mother's or grandmother's pregnancy tests in, in <laughs> landfills. Because if chances are, if you were born before the 1980s, your mom's plastic pregnancy test is still somewhere here on right. earth in a landfill, right? Right. Just a, <laughs> an early relic of you. That's right. Just an early <laughs> relic of you. Fun fact, it's somewhere still here in a landfill, um, but, but really on a mission to try to change that and, and um, you know, shake up the not only the shelf, but obviously the, the category. Great. Well, thanks again.